Hello and welcome back to the drawing board with me, Stephen Lloyd, and to accompany the launch of our new Your Solution Plus box design tool on the website, we're doing a special edition talking about the design of trench boxes. Now, what is a trench box? Put in its simplest form, it is a big plate of metal that goes inside a hole that stops the ground from caving in on you. In fact, it tends to be two big sheets separated by some struts to give you a bit of space inside to work. The important thing about a trench box is that this lower strut is not at the bottom, but it tends to be halfway up to give you some working space down at the bottom here to put a pipe or to do some work at cables and things down at the bottom of your excavation. Similar to a trench box is a manhole box. The only difference being that a manhole box tends to have these wings on them, which as you can see in the plan view here, a trench box is long and narrow, and a manhole box with its wings give you a big square opening that, as the name suggests, lets you build a manhole inside the dig. Um, manhole box wings tend to not go all the way down to the bottom because again, you still want space to be able to get pipes through. The way that most of these things are constructed, there's two strong posts at either side, and then spanning between those, there are beams that basically act like a one-way spanning floor. Uh, the posts are supported by props, which can take both compression and tension, which is important because when you have a lot of force down here and it wants to lever out, sometimes these top struts are actually pulling in to hold the thing together. The way that we design trench and manual boxes is very similar. First of all, we look at the pressure coming on from the soil, pushing on this one-way spanning system, and that causes bowing. So if we're looking in plan again now, looking between the two struts, uh, the ground wants to bend these boxes inwards, and we call that bowing moment. If you're looking in the section view now, and where again, we've got the two struts at the top, and we've got the soil pressure coming on, the base of this box wants to kick in and come inside, um, and these struts are holding it up, but the bending strength of the panel itself wants to uh, resist what we call a kicking moment. And those are the two main uh, effects on the box that we calculate. And the third one is the force on the struts themselves to make sure that they can hold the uh, plates in place. Now, looking back at the Your Solution Plus system, the reason that it's so easy to automate the design of a trench box is the fact that all of these dimensions are known to us and they are fixed. There's no way of squidging the sides and squashing it down, making it taller, making it shorter. The boxes are the size that they are. So for a chosen box, you will have the same distance between struts, the same length, the same width. And it's very easy when you select that box to know exactly what all those dimensions are. The last thing is at the ends of the excavation, um, normally you would batter it down so that the ground at the end, so again we're looking on plan here, the ground at the end, we would batter that down so it's a safe slope uh, and it's not going to cave in. But you can't always do that, so one addition that's included in your Solution Plus is the design of these end panels, which you can span across the ends of a trench box or a manhole box and they will support a vertical face of ground at that end as well. So that's the structural side. We've done the bowing moment, the kicking moment, the strut forces, and we know structurally where all the elements are. The things that are unknown to us at this point is what's happening in the ground itself. So first of all, you've got layers of soil, and depending on what the soil is like, it could be uh, weak ground, it could be strong ground, it could be fairly self-supporting, and that will massively change the amount of pressure that's being applied to the boxes. In the Your Solution Plus system, it deals with that by taking conservative, industry-accepted values uh, for certain types of ground. So, for example, if this top layer was a fairly decent granular material like sand, it would know that it has a density around 19, 20 uh, kilometers per cubic meter. It would know that the angle of friction is around about 30 degrees, let's say. Um, because in the industry, we know what good and bad values are. We know that something with a 15 degree angle of friction is a fair, fairly terrible sand or terrible granular material. Something with an angle of friction of 40 is going to be really strong. It's not going to exert much pressure. Similarly, a clay with a strength of, say, 20 kilonewtons per square meter, it's going to be fairly weak. But one with a strength of 200, that's going to be some nice, strong clay that's going to almost self-support itself. The other things, as well as the soil that we have to consider, surcharges that are in and around the excavation will exert additional pressure. And one very important factor is the effect of water and how groundwater changes the pressure profile entirely. 
If you have no water there, it's a lot easier. If you have a water table that's very high, there can be some uh, unwanted effects there from the water. So soil, water, and surrounding surcharges will all change the pressure profile and alter the structural design of this box. Finally, there are some things that just can't be put into numbers. If there are slopes around, if there are differences in the ground level, you may want to do a slope analysis on the overall global, uh, the overall global state of the soil and the ground around. Uh, and that's not necessarily anything to do with the box or the excavation itself. You have to consider what's around as well. The second thing, although surcharges may account for extra forces on the box, do we account for the box itself, the way it's constructed, having an effect on other services? Roads, pipes, will they get cracked? Will they subside? Will buildings shift or move? Because when you're digging a big hole, all of this soil around here might want to move. So that's stuff that can be incorporated numerically into the design of the box, but it is something that needs to be considered. And lastly, water entering the excavation. If you have water in or around an excavation, the movement of that water can cause things like piping in granular material or base heaving for adhesive material. And those are things, again, that won't necessarily affect the box, but will affect the structure of the excavation itself uh, and how the soil behaves and how you want to manage the risk from that. So overall, all these things can be boiled down into a lot of fairly simple numerical values and that's what the Your Solution Plus system does. So if you want to know more, please go onto our website. There will be a link in the comments below. Um, there will be instructions on how to use the system, a little brief on surcharges and how to properly uh, assess and select them, and a little bit of instruction on what soil types are. Um, so that's been a special edition to talk about the uh, Your Solution Plus Box Designer. Um, it's good to be back doing Back to the Drawing Boards and I hope you'll join us again.